Welcome to Sportsbook Review's NBA Playoff Preview Show. The second round is here. All four playoff matchups are set. Of course, we do have one game one under the belt, but we are going to preview the games one or in uh, one case, game two. Plus, we will take a look at each and every one of the four rounds for the uh, NBA Playoffs round two. I'm Joe Duffy of OffshoreInsiders.com along with Troy West of Troy Wins. Dot com. We will be previewing each and every one of these series for Sportsbook Review. And before Troy and I get started, remember, subscribe to Sportsbook Review's YouTube page if you're not already doing that. And feel free to leave any comments or questions right below in the comments section. And most importantly, could you please, please give us a like if you like this free information. No better way to tell us than giving us a like. And it's really going to help us. I think some of the experts say that might even help us in the search engine optimization, all that other stuff. So if you do like us, please literally like us. Well, Troy, we do have the four uh, second round series set. Before we talk about those, I want to give you uh, briefly the updated odds to win the NBA championship. The Warriors are now the favorites at plus 110, as it looks like. Steph Curry is definitely coming back. They're followed by Houston at plus 160. Philadelphia at 650. Toronto at 900. Cleveland is 10-1 to 1 at uh, plus 1,000. Then after that, team's given very little chance. Utah, 6,000. Uh, Boston, 5,000. And New Orleans at 8,000. If there's a somewhat interesting anomaly, and we did see this at the beginning of the NBA playoffs as well, although the 76ers are the, uh, fa- the number three favorite, but the favorite among any of the Eastern Conference teams, Toronto's still the favorite to win the East, a slight favorite of plus 145 compared to Philadelphia, plus 155. Maybe, you know, the number one reason for that anomaly would be, well, number one reason is going to be because of money. Uh, probably, you know, just the, the money variance came in a little bit different for to win the NBA championships than it is to win the East. Toronto would have the home court advantage if they played the 76ers. Now, if they go to the NBA Finals, and Houston is the uh, team that plays either way, Philadelphia or Toronto would play on the road. Houston would have home court advantage throughout the playoffs. But, you know, I think maybe another reason, I can kind of understand what are the odds makers, and certainly as a handicapper, you would think that the 76ers are more of that snowball rolling downhill with each and every round that the Sixers win. They get more and more dangerous. I don't think there's any person, whether you're a sports handicapper, an NBA fan, a so-called NBA expert who will disagree. The team with the biggest upside is the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, you know, try. I don't think it's that much, maybe that much of an anomaly as, uh, you know, Philadelphia, like I said, plus 650 uh, compared to Toronto, plus 900 to win the NBA championships. But you think it's a little odd, no pun intended, that Toronto is the favorites to win the East, but Philadelphia is given a better chance to win the NBA championship. Yeah, no, Joe, exactly right. You know, it is interesting. Like you said, I think home court advantage, uh, does, does play a big part in that. And I think, you know, if Philadelphia were to get into the finals, they match up better against, per se, Golden State and or Houston. But, you know, I, I do think Toronto, you know, being the veteran team that they are, that they've had the nucleus of that team together for quite some time now. I think that does give them a, a slight advantage over uh, the Philadelphia 76ers. And like you said, home court advantage also gives them a slight advantage. But if Toronto were to go face a Golden State and or a Houston, it's just a very bad matchup uh, where Toronto, or excuse me, where Philadelphia, you bring in a guy like a Joel Embiid and a Ben Simmons, two guys that are very, very tough to guard. You could see them potentially causing some problems for Houston and or Golden State, although I do think the champion comes out of the Western Conference. But I think that's where Vegas is coming up with kind of the interesting odds so to speak with those two games and there are some interesting odds i i think especially when it comes to the series prices and why don't we just do it in order as far as uh, when the games are going to be played we'll start out with the monday night action where in game one philadelphia a four-point road favorite over boston the money clearly coming in on the sixers they open up as only two and a half and to win the series the 76ers despite playing uh, starting out on the road and having only the three home games Minus 340 over Boston. Of course, you and I have already talked uh, on you know just about every single show. We all know about Boston's two big injuries. Well, now they have a third injury, Jalen Brown. Although he hasn't been counted out for the series, he is not expected to play in Game One. So the Celtics are minus a uh, another weapon. But how about some thoughts on the Sixers and Boston, both in the series and in Game One? 
Yeah, Joe, you know, Boston was a pick of mine for against the Milwaukee Bucks. I kind of got swayed it off a little bit, but that one you know, went strictly to the home team and home court ended up playing dividend. And, you know, as we talked about, Brad Stevens is one thing that you necessarily don't handicap, but he's by far one of the best coaches in the NBA, so it's hard to take that away from him. But like you said, going into this series, you know, I've seen Philadelphia at minus 435 roughly. Obviously a little bit too high to maybe play on the series at that high, but I would be absolutely shocked if Boston's got enough energy and stamina to hang up, or excuse me, to hang in there with Philadelphia. Philadelphia, you know, has had some time off, which I think is a team that could could use the time off. I think Joel Embiid being able to rest himself up and and Ben Simmons as well. I'm not sure Boston, having just played a seven game series against Milwaukee, hard hard fought series. Like you said, the injury bugs hit them hard this year, and it continues to hit them hard. And now Jalen Brown, who's who's been one of their key playmakers out for game one. If they don't get this game one, which I don't think they will, Philadelphia, I think, is going to just be a lot to get their home games. And so I would not be shocked, Joe, to see this series go five games, maybe six. I, if I were to bet it, I'd bet it on the exacto. I'd probably take Philadelphia in five. But even tonight's game, four points just seems way too low. i got to think that fatigue has to play a role in Boston tonight. This is a team that just got done playing game seven. And now they got to come back and go up against the monster in Philadelphia. So I like Philadelphia tonight, and I sure as heck like them in the series. Probably not at that minus 400 plus price, but if I was a better out there, I'd probably land them in games five or six. Boy, I wouldn't even be shocked if we saw a four game sweep here, Joe. I just think Philadelphia is too much for Boston. Yeah, Troy, there's not too much to disagree about it. Uh, with anything you said, like I said before, we talked about Brad Stevens on some of the previous shows for crying out loud, what this guy has done at both the college and the NBA level. And especially this year, you know, with all those injuries, he is clearly one of the great minds in all of uh, basketball. And he's a guy who's, who's going to be around for many, many years. Boston with a great signing, you know, the perfect opportunity where I've never really been a big fan of hiring a coach straight out of college, especially one that doesn't have any NBA experience, but it was a perfect situation where they were in a rebuilding mode so they could really adjust as uh, as Brad Stevens learned the NBA game, and that plan has worked out perfectly. In this series, I think the greatest subplot is clearly that uh, Fultz for Tatum essential trade, and essentially that was the trade where Philadelphia um, traded Jason Tatum to, to move up in the draft. This could come back and haunt them. We know that uh, Fultz had some flashes. We know that the whole crazy story behind his shooting woes and whatnot. But clearly, that trade has benefited Boston in the short term. And for Boston to steal this series, Jason Tatum's probably going to be the man that's going to have to do it. I was very surprised when I did my research. Probably the single biggest surprise because the eye test said otherwise. But according to the advanced analytics that Al Horford actually matches up very well against Joel Embiid, I'm not buying it. Maybe short term and maybe based on, you know, some of the, the stats. And it was really based on how uh, teams do with uh, with uh, Horford guarding, uh, guarding Embiid as relative to the rest of the league. Horford's one of these guys where he's a big man, but he always wants to be a small forward. I've seen him come playoff time where it gets more physical. He gets pushed around and shoved around. I'm just throwing out those advanced analytics. I just think that Embiid's going to bully Horford. Uh, you know, like we both said, and the Sixers, of course, they are now healthy. Joel Embiid is back. So the Sixers don't have many opportunities to say that they're the healthier of the two teams. They certainly are here. I agree with you. I think a maximum of six games. I think Philadelphia should win it in four. But, you know, the key here is what does happen if Boston does manage to, uh, get a couple games at home, and then Philadelphia is behind. We still got to remember the 76ers, they are a very young team. Their two star players are as as young as it's going to get. You got, you know, the so-called uh, redshirt freshman, the so-called redshirt sophomore. So if Boston can get up two to nothing or even one game to nothing, how will the 76ers do? They were only punched in the mouth once in the first series where they lost game two to Miami. But the Sixers, they're not used to playing from behind. So what if Boston can steal game one? And then all of a sudden, they win game two. I do believe in the old adage, a series doesn't really begin until the road team wins. But the 76ers have yet to trail in a series, and that's very important because they are young. But still, all in all, the Sixers four-game sweep is a definite possibility. And remember, check SBR odds, all the approved sports books. You can bet 
you know, a certain team to win it in, in a certain number of games. So you don't just have to bet on the uh, series odds, which team's going to win. You can bet on, for example, the 76ers to uh, sweep or, or to win in, in five games. And, you know, make sure you check SBR odds for that. But, yeah, Troy, we're definitely on the same page in that series. Cleveland at Toronto, I would certainly say this is the most intriguing second-round matchup of all. Uh, Toronto is a six-and-a-half-point favorite in Game 1. They are also the favorites to win the series at minus 180. This series kind of parallels with uh, those of you who are watching the NHL, and I know both Troy and I are releasing our NHL plays, mine at offshoreinsiders.com and Troy at TroyWins.com, uh, but we're Washington and Pittsburgh where maybe on paper you can make an argument for one team, but as far as the quote-unquote intangibles, look, Toronto, like the Washington Capitals, has a history of coming up short, not always just in the first round, can be in the second round. And Cleveland, I'm just not buying all these talking heads on TV. I know there's, you know, some ex-coaches, ex-players, guys who have played the game where they say Cleveland's not all that talented. I think that the Cavaliers are the poster child. You know, Greg Popovich may have invented where uh, teams pace themselves during the regular season and really ramp it up in the postseason. And in order to do that successfully, you do have to have at least one championship ring under your belt. And, of course, in the case of their leader, LeBron, he's got multiple championships. Cleveland is built much better for the postseason than the regular season. The King, I don't think, uh, you know, he may not uh, win another regular season MVP. He's got some postseason MVPs uh, maybe ahead of him. I don't know, Troy. Are you buying this? Is Toronto really that much better team than Cleveland, quote, unquote, on paper? You know, Joe, you probably disagree with me on this one. I Believe it or not, I absolutely love Toronto in this series. I, I really do. You know, I think Cleveland went seven games with Indiana for a reason. And let's be honest, Joe, Indiana was good this year, but this was not by any means a powerhouse. This was a five seed that entered the playoffs that, you know, at towards the end of the season almost missed the playoffs in the Eastern Conference. This was not a good Indiana Pacer basketball team. This was an Indiana Pacer team that was well coached, had a few decent guys like Oladipo step up late, Collison stepped up late, but it took the, the Cleveland Cavaliers seven games to put the Pacers away, and, and the Pacers actually had to choke a couple of those games away, and, and a couple of games that they were up late and really could have put the Cavaliers away and didn't. Now, with that being said, like you said, LeBron James was absolutely spectacular, had probably one of the best Game 7 performances that I've ever seen starting that game out with 17 points, going 7-for-7. Seven seven. But this, to me, is a LeBron one-man show. I mean, Tristan Thompson showed up a little bit last night, but Kevin Love's still just kind of been Kevin Love. He hasn't shown his all-star caliber that, that he's has in the past. And a lot of these role players, the Rodney Hoods, the George Hills, these guys have not been what LeBron thought they were going to be. So, you know, LeBron James just did seven games. I'm not saying he's going to fatigue out, but for him to be able to keep this up throughout the whole playoffs at his age, I just don't see feasible. I really don't. I think there's a reason that Toronto's favored by six and a half points. This is a Toronto team where Kyle Lowry and DeRozan and these guys have played together now for quite some time. Dwayne Casey's a fantastic coach. Toronto is not an easy place to play. This is a place to play that, like you said, they've had trouble getting out of the second round and the first round here in the past, but I think this is a, a, a new team, a rejuvenated team. They've been healthy all year. They looked outstanding. You know, you and I both said that Washington was going to be a very tough eight seed. Mm -hmm. They took Washington down in six games. This is a good Toronto basketball team. I'm not going to necessarily take them in game one, but I do think that they take the Cavaliers down in six games. I really do. Well, actually, Troy, the reason that we, the fact that we do disagree, I think, is the reason why this is far and away the most intriguing second round matchup. Uh, why I don't agree with you, I also don't disagree. There is, there's no question about it. Toronto is the better team on paper. And yeah, we'll, we'll get the old, you know, cliche out of the way where people like to say Toronto's a hockey town, but you watch those playoff games. Toronto has a humongous home court advantage and, and playing devil's advocate. Look, LeBron James, as well as Michael Jordan, these are guys that did take their lumps in the playoffs before they finally took it to the next level. And you could argue that Toronto has done that. They did uh, win a series last year. They won one this year. So maybe they are over the hump. You're right. You know, Kevin Love and Kyle Korver 
and, uh, you know, J.R. Smith. These aren't the greatest players in the world, but I think cumulatively each one of those guys are kind of the, the poster child of what I like to look for, veterans that are going to play more minutes in the postseason and can turn it up a notch. So none of those guys individually are necessarily going to turn it up uh, several notches, but I do think that they still are a team that is built a little bit better for the postseason, not to mention from, you know, the psychological standpoint, there really wasn't a need for Cleveland to have that sense of urgency during the regular season. So the fact that they're not a first, second, or third seed doesn't completely terrify me. No, I, well, I certainly wouldn't call it an upset, and it literally isn't going to be an upset since Toronto is the uh, favorite. So I would not be surprised at all if Toronto wins. I still think a little bit of a second round upset. I still think all in all, Cleveland will win it in seven because of that intangible. LeBron James finds a way to win. He is truly one of the greatest to ever play the game for a reason, and that reason is playoff time. But again, if the if the favorites uh, win here, it's not going to be you know all that much of a surprise. So, and, and again, I, I like to make my game the game adjustments. So I make predictions here. I don't like to make series bets. I still think all in all. Uh, Cleveland wins it, but I can completely understand where uh, Toronto is uh, is the favorites here. And I know a lot of the talking heads do think Toronto is going to win this. And you do make a great point. I will say this, and maybe kind of going back to the Philadelphia-Boston series, as I say, I always like to take that scientific uh, approach to the scientific method approach to my handicapping. I come up with a theory and try to disprove it. And no matter how I twist it and turn the numbers being more rested is without a question the benefit in the postseason. So I know a lot of people say I'd rather be the sharper team than the more rested team. No, it is definitely better to be the uh, more rested team. New Orleans and uh, Golden State. Golden State, certainly the prohibitive favorites. Uh, they are 11-point favorite. It looks like they're finally going to get Steph Curry back. I do come up with that. Yeah, I do believe that when a team is playing well, Without their injured star, very often, even more times than not, you take a small step back before taking the step forward. So this might be a chance for New Orleans to uh, to, to uh, steal a game here. We'll see. Uh, not surprisingly, Golden State, very uh, prohibitive, 2,400 favorite to uh, beat New Orleans. So that's, you know, not really a shock there. You know, Troy, can you make an argument? We're going to see a stunning upset. Yeah, Joe, you know, I don't think this is a series. I really don't. I think a lot of people, including Duncan's having swept Portland. You know, Drew Holiday came out of nowhere. Uh, you know, Anthony Davis playing some of his best basketball that we've ever seen him play. But, you know, with all that being said, Golden State really kind of threw a knockout punch in that game one. And, yeah, while it's only one game, I don't see the Pelicans really hanging around in game two and, and falling behind two to zero to a team that's got as much playoff and championship experiences, Golden State is never a good thing. And, you know, a lot of teams get shooken up when you bring a superstar back, but Steph Curry's shown in the past when he comes back, this team really kind of lights a fire and rallies around him. It's one more score for Golden State. You know, they're getting healthy at the right time. They're starting to play their best basketball at the right time. I don't think this is much of a series. Wouldn't be shocked to see Golden State sweep them or at least win it in five, but you know, I just don't think the Pelicans have enough firepower to hang around. This Golden State team is looking like they're on their way to another championship. Yeah, Troy, in theory, New Orleans is sort of the team that I would like as a dark horse. They do have that superstar, you know, my Adrian Barbeau theory. They're top heavy with Anthony Davis and with Rondo and Holiday. They do have what I just got done talking about. I do like these teams where you can have the veterans can step it up, play some more minutes in the postseason. So New Orleans, in a sense, is that team, and maybe that's why they were a little bit of a, where they surprised some people, sweeping in uh, round one. But still, look, I, I just don't know how you can make any argument that there's going to be a huge upset here, you know, unless there's some, you know, ho horrible run of injuries on Golden State, but a true upset that doesn't involve any injuries. I just can't see it happening. You know, maybe, uh, to, to use one of your terms, you know, maybe New Orleans blew their load in round one, but the, the bottom line is they're just playing a superior team. Golden State, especially with Kerry back, they are the best team in the NBA. I'm sorry, Houston, but Golden State is the team to beat. And I do think, again, four game sweep wouldn't surprise me. Five games max. Uh, just do not throw your money away at these sports books. 
and bet on New Orleans to win this series. But like I said, maybe, maybe if you do want to get a little cutesy, you know, with the, the one step back to take a couple steps forward, if they're going to really steal a big upset, maybe, maybe, you know, with uh, Curry coming back, you could put in, you know, like I said, about one-tenth of your normal bet on the money line. But other than that, there isn't going to be an upset. There is one other one other kind of anomaly, too, in addition to the Toronto-Philadelphia anomaly. Not surprisingly, as I say, Golden State, they are the favorites to win it all. New Orleans, the biggest long shot far and away at 8,000. Yet uh, Houston is a bigger favorite over Utah than Golden State is over New Orleans. The Rockets, 5,000, minus 5,000 over the Utah Jazz. And uh, on Wednesday, Houston is laying 11 points. You know, I I do think what the 76ers especially, and, you know, maybe uh, U- Utah with Donovan Mitchell, this could really be a year. I don't think it's an anomaly, much like in the NFL analogous to the NFL, where rookie quarterbacks over the last 10 years have actually become a factor and you can contend with a rookie quarterback. Maybe this will be the year that you can contend with a young superstar. Donovan Mitchell has been spectacular. I do think you know Utah has maybe three, four games left in their season, not because their superstar is a rookie, just because they are uh, clearly uh, overmatched by Houston. Look, you know, Houston, they're... they're, they're uh, Clearly emerging, their young centers really emerged as a star, and we know about their their great one-two punch. I don't see any type of uh, crazy upset coming here. That Houston is, you know, just a much better team than than Utah. But I don't know, Troy. Can can Utah kind of sneak it in with their young superstar? Maybe, maybe he's a little bit too young to realize they're supposed to lose. Is there a possibility of an upset here, or should we not outsmart the room? Yeah, no, we can't outsmart them. I, you know, I would not be shocked to see Utah maybe get a game at home. You know, wouldn't even be absolutely shocked if they got two games at home, but they're not going to win any of these games in Houston, and I, and I would be shocked if they actually did win the home games. It'd be kind of interesting to see where that spread comes out. I think Houston, when they're in Salt Lake City, will probably be a four or five point favorite, but, you know, this team, I, I thought, you know, even going into the playoffs, I was actually shocked to see them take down Oklahoma City. But Oklahoma City was so dysfunctional, they couldn't seem to get anything going. But this is a Houston team that's been rocking and rolling since day one. And with Chris Paul healthy and Clint Capel healthy and James Harden playing the way that he's playing, this team is virtually unbeatable when it comes to, when it comes to Utah. Like you said, when these two, when, when Houston reaches, uh, Golden State, it's going to be a different series that we're talking about. But it's, you know, it's disappointing for the NBA playoffs to have these two rounds. I mean, you know, I'm already looking forward to the Houston Golden State matchup, as I'm sure you are, mm-hmm. and many others. So, you know, you hate to count a team out like Utah, but they just do not have the firepower to hang around. And this is a good, solid veteran team with a veteran coach. Houston's way too much. You know, like I said, wouldn't be shocked to see Utah get a game at home or maybe two, but I think this one's definitely over in six. And if my money was on it, I'd probably bet Houston in five. And that's interesting. You did talk about, you know, kind of the mild upset over Oklahoma City in uh, Series 1. That kind of gets back to what we were saying earlier, where it's not often that a coach can be successful at both the NBA and college basketball level. Not that Billy Donovan's necessarily been a disaster at the NBA level, but yet just another example of what we keep talking about. What a job Brad Stevens has done to be so successful at both levels. You know, I know there are rumors Billy Donovan, maybe he'll be out of a job. I think if he wants another NBA chance, he'll get it. But certainly, certainly every college basketball team that has an opening, if Billy Donovan does become available, would be would be salivating at that. But yeah, you know, like I said, Troy, I, I, I guess Billy Donovan's modest success in the NBA kind of is just another great example of what we talked about. Is Brad Stevens possibly the best coach in the NBA? And if he's not already, uh, probably five, ten years when we have this conversation, he is. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. Absolutely. You know, it's it's interesting, Joe. You know, this this series, you know, Quinn Snyder's done a heck of a yeah. job for, for Utah with, with these young guys. And Utah, without a doubt, has overachieved throughout the course of the year. But but you just got to think that this is this is going to come to an end here, probably here uh, by the end of the week or early next week. I just can't see it going any any further. All right, some very intriguing matchups and certainly even the mismatches from a betting standpoint 
can be very uh, intriguing. So, Troy, why don't you tell everybody what they can get at TroyWins.com? Yeah, thanks, Joe. Had a great weekend going 8-2 and two over the weekend. Been pretty hot here in the NHL and doing even better in baseball right now. Really picked up our game. Come take a look. We've got a couple of nice series bets that we're going to be releasing here for hockey. Uh, some uh, NHL-adjusted price series bets. And also here in the NBA, that's TroyWins.com. Come take a look. We're happy to give you a free trial. Yeah, and that last uh, second three-pointer on Sunday, the only thing that stopped me at OffshoreInsiders.com from yet a- another sweep, 57-18 and 18 basketball run. And as I've been saying, look, I know there are a lot of handicappers out there, none of them that would appear on SBR, but a lot of handicappers who are known for uh, making up records. There are times that I almost need to make up a record. No, not to make myself look better, but sometimes uh, over the 30 years I've been in this business, I've gone on runs that are almost too unbelievable to actually believe. But my 57-18 and 18 run, 100% legit. No, there's no retroactive cherry picking of line shopping, which I know a lot of handicappers do. Uh, we don't do that at offshoreinsiders.com. It's been a nice NHL playoffs for us as well. I think I'm only one game above 500 in the NHL playoffs, but with quite a few underdogs along the way. So join me at offshoreinsiders.com. And as I look at the schedule, yeah, Troy, I think we'll be back on Thursday. I know we've been adjusting our schedule based on the, you know, the NBA uh, playoff schedule, but Thursday will be the day that we will be back to do another NBA preview show here at Sportsbook Review. And please make sure that you uh, subscribe to the Sportsbook Review channel. I'm sure 95% of you already have, but for the 5% of you who have not, do that and continue to join Troy and me throughout the NBA playoffs. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos, so please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.